any reader of ancient philosophy or the classics will be conversant with Plato's allegory of the cave. The narrative, which is cast as a dialogue between Plato's teacher, Socrates, and his brother Glaucon, tells us about a group of people sitting but chained in a certain cave, and opposite them is this wall on which they could see shadows of people and animals passing outside when the sun rises. Being in this cave for a very long time and seeing the shadows, they concluded that what they saw were real human beings and animals, and even gave names to them. My dear friends, the worst place to be is in darkness, more so when there is no hope for light. So this third Sunday in ordinary time of the year, year A, we reflect on finding the light amid the darkness. My dear friends, the first reading from the book of Isaiah chapter 8 from verse 23, beginning again from chapter 9 verse 3, is a prophecy that was fulfilled in the mission of our Lord Jesus Christ. The prophecy says that those sitting in darkness have seen a great light. This sounds like the people in Plato's allegory of the cave, people sitting in darkness. My dear friends, for someone to sit in darkness and do nothing about it means a lot. So we now look at the implications of sitting in darkness. The first is ignorance. Sitting in darkness and being comfortable about it has a lot to do with ignorance. And ignorance has to do with the lack of appropriate or required knowledge. Remember, the prophet Hosea says in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6a, that my people perish for lack of knowledge. St. Paul instructing the Ephesians in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 18, told them not to reflect the idea or the disposition of the Gentiles who had their understanding darkened and alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance at work in them. The second implication is confusion. Confusion arises when someone's sanity and focus are thrown apart leading to multiple errors. Being in darkness engineers and sustains confusion. For instance, one might mistake a wall to be a door. Why would anyone like to sit in darkness if the individual is not confused? So confusion persists as long as darkness tarries until light shines. The third index of darkness is limitation, which also means being restricted or restrained. The individuals are sitting in darkness because they are limited to the point that they cannot move. Even if they walk in darkness, it is still the same thing because no one makes progress in darkness. That means the next step is unclear. They are limited. The concluding part of Plato's allegory of the cave, which we did not present earlier, tells us that one person among those sitting in the cave eventually escaped to the real world. And with the sunlight, the individual was able to see real human beings and animals, and then came to the conclusion that what they saw in the cave were all shadows because it was all darkness. My dear friends, life changes everything because it reveals reality. Nothing what what happens until light shows. Recall that before God started his creative work, he said, let there be light, and there was light, as we can see in Genesis chapter 1 verse 3. Similar to the event at the beginning of time, the Gospel of John chapter 1 verse 9 says, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. And when Jesus began his ministry, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but have the light of life, as we can see in John chapter 8, verse 12. So, my dear friends, with the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, light came to those who have been sitting in darkness. My dear friends, at this point, let us check in to see the impact of these two lights in the world. The first is life. The first effect of light is vitalization 
Everything comes to life through light. No wonder John chapter 1 verse 4 says, In him is life, and that life is the light of the world. That means there is an organic relationship between light and life. No wonder God said, Let there be light before he started creating life. The second impact is joy. Light gives bread to joy. The first reading tells us, among other things, that when the light shines for those who are in darkness, there is great rejoicing. Joy is light dependent, just as sadness is a product of darkness. My dear friends, the joyful is always lightful. The third impact of light is deliverance and salvation. Those in darkness are those held under the bondage of sin and they need deliverance and salvation. The first reading also tells us that with the introduction of light, the yoke that burdened these people, the pole on their shoulders, and the rod of their taskmasters were shattered because light came. And the ultimate part of it is that light will lead our souls to salvation. The fourth impact is discipleship. Notice that after the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ as the light shining in darkness, what followed was the call to discipleship. We heard that Simon, Andrew his brother, including also James and John the sons of Zebedee, left everything, including their father, in the case of James and John, and followed Jesus Christ. Light is only useful if it can bring people to itself. Moving forward, my dear friends, let us strive to become the light in our world. Wherever there is darkness, two things are involved. One, there is no light. Second, there is light but it's not shining. That is why our Lord Jesus Christ not only said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, you are the light of the world. He also said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, let your light shine. Today, my dear friends, we have become the extensions of the true light, our Lord Jesus Christ. So we need to allow our light to shine to the unveiling point that our people will see our good works and give glory to our Father in heaven. We should let this light to bring life, joy, deliverance, and salvation to people. Much as we also become true disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ by seeing the light and following the light and also encouraging others to follow the light. My dear friends, I am the light shining in the darkness. You are too. So let us come together and shine in our world today to dispel every form of darkness and bring the light of Christ to the reality of our existence. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. In your light, we see light. Grant us the grace to remain faithful to this calling, to discipleship, that we may follow you and radiate that light that will bring hope to our hopeless world, that will bring joy to our saddened world, and to also to bring deliverance in our world held down by sin and every form of disobedience. May your love and mercy be upon us. We make our prayers to the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.